Hello everyone, welcome back to the course of Introductions to General Linguistics with me, Suprayogi. So today we are going to talk about the specific lessons that is about uh, microlinguistics. Microlinguistics is a branch of linguistic study focusing on the specific and the small units of language and it's uh, divided into several branches. Number one is the study of phonetics and phonology that will focusing on the study of sounds. Second of all, the study of word formations that we call it as morphology. And then with the study of the sentence structures, we call it as syntax. And the next one is the study of meanings, the textual meaning or lexical meaning in semantics and contextual meaning in pragmatics. So in the end of this uh, video and in the end of this subjects, it is hoped that you will be able to understand and explain the basic principles and a basic terminologies in that branches. Welcome to the first part about phonetics and phonology. So phonetics is the study of how sounds is produced, sounds of the human language. Meanwhile, phonology is the study of the specific sounds productions in particular language. For example, in the context of English, it means that you study about English phonology. When you study how the certain sounds in Indonesian language is, are produced, we call it Indonesian phonology and also it happens for other language. So in phonetics and phonology, you will learn about the sounds productions that is divided into two. The first one is the place of articulations. So you learn more about uh, the speech organs and also the manner of articulations, how the sounds are produced actually. So now let's move to the next part about the terminology that you are going to learn further. Number one is phoneme. Phoneme is the smallest units of meanings, that uh, smallest unit of language that did distinguish the meanings. For example, in Indonesian language, you are familiar with the word um, kita, but we change the sounds into kina. So the t sounds substituted by n sounds, then it changed the meanings. So that's basically the basic principles of phoneme. What about in English? In English, we have lots of examples that, that talks about, uh, about that one. For example, we have the sound combination of can or in the letter of C, A, and N. But we change this into the letter combination of C, A, and T or the sound of uh, T and then A uh, and N. So you change it into can. So the first one is refers to animal, the second one uh, refers to containers. So uh, allophone means that it is smallest units of sounds in a language that does not distinguish the meanings. So for example, uh, in Indonesian context, Indonesia have lots of uh, variations in sounds because uh, we are rich of um, cultures and ethnic groups. For example, when uh, the Western ethnic group like Batak will say uh, berapa into berapa, like e and e sounds is considered the same, it doesn't distinguish the meanings in Indonesian language. So that is the case of allophones, everyone. All right, now we have phonemes allophones and the next we're going to talk about phonotactics. Phonotactics is actually anal analyzing certain words based on the classifications of vowel and consonants. Okay, so for example, we have the word or uh, the word work or doing activity. It consists of the letter W, O, R, and K. So W is considered as a consonant, O is a vowel, R is actually the consonants again, and then uh, K is a consonant. So the phonotactics of that word is that consonant, vowel, consonant, consonants. Now, the analysis of phonotactics is useful to determine whether particular language can have a series of single consonant, double consonant, triple consonant, or more than that. 
also they have a combinations of one vowel, two vowels, three vowels, four vowels. So this kind of uh, reaching the wi uh, widest possibility of consonant vowels in a language. Next one, we we'll talk about received pronunciations. So received pronunciations, actually the acceptable pronunciations in English that usually refer to um, British English or American English. So, but that terms of received pronunciation can uh, now is no longer used because now we are more into world Englishes where we try to appreciate every single accent of English in the world. Now, to know more about what is actually um, uh, the sounds uh, productions, we should be familiar with what we call as IPA or International Phonetics Alphabets. So you may Google now and I'll give you an illustrations around here that IPA is a table that can try to uh, describe uh, certain sounds in any languages and then so that everyone in the end can learn the sounds of any language more than the mother language or than uh, the uh, foreign language that they learned at schools. So by having the IPA, someone's uh, sounds productions can be standardized. Alright, so now we are going to talk about basic principles in morphology. Morphology is study of language that focusing on the word structures. When we talk about the word structures or the word formations, we talk about its unit. And the smallest units in morphology, we call it as morphemes. So morphemes later can be divided into several categories. And now let's talk about the category number one. The category number one is free morpheme versus bound morpheme. What is actually free morphemes? Free morphemes are the morphemes which can stand alone and this word cannot be um, classified into the smaller parts like what we have in the word yes that we have in the word no that's the smallest units that we cannot divide it against into uh, let's say several uh, smallest uh, words or letters meanwhile bound morphemes is the opposite of the of, of the free morpheme itself so now let's take a look at the examples Okay, the example that I give you is the word unkind. So we have two morphemes there. The first one is un and the second one is kind. Kind is actually free morpheme because it can stand alone. It has the meanings. Meanwhile, un doesn't have the meaning until it is attached to the words. So un in this context is called as bound morphemes. Another example of bound morpheme is that when we have the words happiness. In the word happiness, we have two morphemes there. The first one is happy and the second one is ness. Happy is free morpheme and can stand alone. Meanwhile, ness cannot stand alone and we call it as the bound morphemes. So compared to the previous example, we have an in the beginning, right? So we call it as prefix. And happiness, ness in this context is called as suffix. Suffix and prefix is actually the terms that we have uh, what we call as affix. Is that clear enough about free and bound morphemes? Yes. Now we move to the second parts about derivational and inflectional morphemes. All right. So what make it difference into inflectionals and derivational morphemes? Number one, derivational morphemes. We talk about uh, the morphemes that can change the meanings of the words or maybe change the part of speech of the words. For example, we have the word darkness. Dark is actually um, adjective and we add it with suffix or the bound morpheme ness into darkness and the category chains from adjective into the noun. All right. And another example is the word unhappy. Happy is actually 
adjective the meaning is you are glad but unhappy is the opposite of that one so it changes the meaning meanwhile when we talk about inflectional morphemes it does not change the meaning but it changes the uh, the grammatical functions for example we have the word uh, camera camera we add it with suffix s or uh, the bound morpheme s it become cameras from plural into singular the meanings is actually the same so that is the basic principle in morphology all right so this is the end of the first video about um, microlinguistics about two um, definitions and uh, terminologies which is about phonetic and phonology and also morphology okay see you again in another video everyone bye